outside the world. So this painting that I have been asked to discuss today is a pilgrimage piece, one of treasures of Asian Art Museum collection. You can find uh, a lot about any work in museum. museum galleries by uh, checking uh, its label. For instance, uh, in the label for this screen, you can find, uh, beginning from the top, the date, artist, period, medium, measurement, and the funding information. As you can see, this painting has a long credit line uh, indicating that many people support it, making it possible for the museum to purchase. You can also see uh, in the label that after the work was acquired, it was remounted with support of the uh, Asian uh, Society for Asian Art. And thank you very much to all of you. At the very end of the at the very end is accession number. It tells you uh, this was 111th piece to enter the museum collection in 1998. <laughs> when I saw this work, it didn't look like this at all. Uh, I saw what I saw were actually eight separate hanging scrolls. Apparently, they had been kept for decades in a drawer in the CV Star East Asian Library at Columbia University. They could not tell me very much about the painting. All they knew was an Asian student gave the paintings to the university when he finished his studies at Columbia and before he returned home. They thought this might have happened between 1920 and 1930. I was given a chance to examine eight hanging scrolls through Kay Black's effort. As many of you might know, she is an independent scholar who now lives in San Francisco. While she was studying, Korean chesekwa, meaning paintings in colors, she came across the scrolls hiding away in the East uh, Asian Library through the help of Professor Gary Ledard uh, at Columbia. She must have been the only person at the time in the West who was working on paintings in colors, Kore Korean paintings on top of that. <coughs> This was the era of uh, Michael Sullivan, James Cahill, Wan Fong, Li Ju Ching, and so on. And all of us in Asian art history were studying Chinese ink monochrome paintings to death. <laughs> when Kay Black saw Columbia's eight hanging uh, scrolls, I think she must have known immediately that they had been originally in a folding screen format. She arranged the, let's see. She arranged the uh, eight panels in this sequence as we have today. There is an untold story behind the purchase of this screen. The fund we raised, quite a substantial amount to purchase the screen became an endowment for Korean books for the CV uh, Star East Asian Library at Columbia University. I questioned K. Black, why in this particular order? I remember he, her explaining about the use of chiaroscuro, linear perspective in a limited manner. When she pointed out the section where the books spilled into the next panel, do you see that? I realized that uh, she knew what she was talking about because I certainly didn't catch that section. There is a tray. Okay, uh, with seals on top 
shelf of the fourth panel from the right. All the seals are standing except one that is turned exposing carved face. She was able to identify the seal as that of Young Nok. She also discovered that with the help of late uh, Professor Edward Wagner, Young Nok was the same man as Yi Hyung Nok. Young Nok's name did appear once in 1864 in the record kept at Royal Library, uh, Gujangak in Gyeongbok. Uh, Changdeok Palace, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Scarlett's Kurtaman paintings belong to the painting category of Mumbang, meaning study or scholar studio. In the Mumbang category, Scarlett's Kurtaman was one of the subjects called Chekka or Chekkori. Chekka means book stand or bookshelf. It refers to painting that includes bookcases, while checkery, meaning books and the stuff, is an informal vernacular term referring to uh, paintings with books and other things, but not necessarily uh, with bookcases or bookshelves. Green is in the collection of Hoam Art Museum, now called Liam Samsung Museum of Art. It was pa painted by Yi Hyungnok. Please remember that Yi Hyungnok and Yi Eungnok are the same painter. <laughs> Unlike Yi Eungnok, whose name appeared only once, Yi Hyungnok's name appeared continuously in the court record from 1832 to 1863. Hyungnok appears to have been a very popular painter. The 19th century scholar Yu Jaegeun wrote in his journal titled A Record of Seen and Heard at Home in Korea that he had in his room a multi-paneled folding screen painted in the theme of scholar study by Yi Hyungnok. His guests would mistake it as a real bookcase filled with books. They would come close to see it when they found that it was only a painted screen. Uh, they would break out in laughter. <coughs> Yi Hyungnok came from a long line of established professional uh, painter family. For six generations, the family produced 15 court painters and five court painters in a wedding. As mentioned earlier, through K Black's research, we know that Yi Hyungnok had a second name, Yi Eungnok. She discovered that he also had a third name, Yi Taekyun. <coughs> Koreans still change uh, their names. They, they have a custom of changing their names. But the three names are a bit extreme. I, I know at least three people whose names were changed once. Not by them, but by their parents. <coughs> Hyungnok's grandfather, Yi Jonghyun, was recognized by Kim Jongjo for his skill in scholars' occultments paintings. He appears to have established family tradition in this subject, which he handed down to his two sons, Yumin and Sumin. Yumin, in turn, handed the family tradition down to his son, Hyungnok, the painter of Samsung and Asian art screens. Yi jong -hyun's younger son, Sumin, also served as a court painter in waiting and was known for his skill in uh, checkery paintings. Sumin's son, Technok, also excelled in this subject. Needless to say, the screen with Hyungnok's seal in the Samsung Museum of Art shows many similarities to the screen with Eungnok's seal in the Asian Art Museum collection. Uh, the shape of uh, 
uh, the bookcase, the simple organization of shelves in each panel, uh, piles of books, and the many collectibles are similar, as well as his, un as well as, uh, his understated way of presentation. In the Samsung screen by Lee Young No, there is a box holding seals. It is placed at the lower shelf on the last panel on the uh, left, and the seal, uh, one seal turns exposing uh, the carved side, just like the way in the Asian Art Museum uh, screen. Oh, I can look at this. I don't have to turn like this. I'm very uh, technically behind, you know. Uh, I have the uh, Asian Art Museum screen on the right, and the four right panels of the Samsung screen on the left for comparison. Among the interesting collectibles, in both screens, you can see a small cup with crackles and the red cover, the Buddha hands fruits, bronze vase with peacock feathers, and the ceramic vase with crackles holding flowers. The difference is that the Samsung screen has only three shelves in each panel throughout, although in different heights while Asian art screen also has three shelves in most panels, but the center fourth and fifth panels have four shelves. <laughs> Here I have Asian art museum screen on the right, and the Samsung screen uh, screens four left panels for comparison. Again, you see in both screens uh, from the right, uh, three bulbs of flowering narcissus, in a flat ceramic dish with undulating lip, coral stand with jade pendant, a half-covered lid motif, although the cups, shapes, and colors are different, and the bronze tripod with long, thin legs. I was much relieved to find that two screens are not identical. Although the same painter is producing both screens uh, using many of the same motifs, this suggests that there was a family manual on this theme, perhaps from his grandfather, Lee Jonghyun, Lee Jonghyun's time, or even earlier. And uh, Hyungnok relied on his family manual each time he produced Chekka or Chekkari uh, painting. Koreans did have a long tradition of keeping records. <coughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, Joseon Court, for instance, always kept written as well as the uh, pictorial uh, record of each court event, as you can see in these examples. <laughs> Uh, they kept a meticulous record of what they needed and what they used. This is attributed to Lee hyung no. It is painted in ink and light colors on paper and is in the collection of the Kansong Museum of Fine Arts in Seoul. The example like this suggests strongly that Hyungnok's family did keep their sketches and did have manual or two. I'd like to introduce to you a screen that I believe uh, belongs together with the Asian and the Samsung screens. Because Japanese collectors in the early 20th century believed that this type of Korean paintings were folk art, this screen is in the collection of the Kurashiki Minge Gang, a Kurashiki Museum of folk, art, folk Crafts in Japan. It is an eight panel folding screen. I was not able to include the middle section of the screen. Each panel in the uh, uh, right half of the uh, screen has three shelves, while each panel on the left half, four shelves. 
No seal box is included in this screen to reveal who the painter was, but I believe this might have been by Yi Hung Nok or Yi Eung Nok. Besides the obvious four friends of study, such as paper, brush, ink stick, and ink stone, many parallels can be found in Asian art, Samsung, and Grashiki uh, screens. For instance, in its sober approach, together with the arrangement of shelves, the emphasis on books, articles such as the Narcissus, Buddha hands, Uh, and vases with flowers, uh, peacock feathers, and so on. Especially the brush holders in all uh, three screens seem to belong to the same family. On the left is Krashiki Bingei Kang. <coughs> In the middle is Samsung Museum of Art. On the right is Asian Art Museum. As far as the condition of these screens concerned, Murashiki screen fared the worst, and the Samsung screen is next, and Asian Art Museum screen comes out on the top. This is chiefly because, in the case of Asian Art Museum screen, uh, paintings had been hidden away and had not been exposed to light for nearly 70 or 80 years. We know that Chakori paintings gained popularity during the reign of King Zhengzhou. His interest and enthusiasm for the theme can be substantiated by the fact that Mumbang, a study or scholar studio, was the one of three new categories, along with architecture and genre paintings. He added to the earlier five categories, landscape, figures, birds and flowers, uh, birds and feathers, I'm sorry, insects, and uh, uh, prunus and bamboo. In examination or competition devised for his painters in waiting called the Chabi Deryong Hwawon, King Jeongjo selected 10 best painters out of regular court painters and gave them the opportunity to compete uh, in quarterly examinations on topics picked from eight painting categories. Did those who scored highest received extra rewards or bonuses? And this system of the quarterly competition or examination set up to reward the talented court painters in waiting was called nokchije, meaning salary obtained uh, through talents, or talents take the rewards, salary, or bonuses. <laughs> This system, initiated by King Zhengzhou in 1783, lasted nearly for 100 years until King Gojong's time in uh, 1881. Scholar official who enjoyed King Zhengzhou's trust, such as Oje Sun and Nam Gong Chol, wrote about the comments King Zhengzhou made on scholar Sukutraman's paintings in 1791 and 1798, respectively. According to them, King Zhengzhou enjoyed having scholar Sukutraman painting behind his chair in Changdeok Palace's uh, Sanjong Hall, where he carried uh, out his uh, daily royal duties. He told his officials that even though the books in the painting looked real, they were only painted books. It seemed that ever since he ascended the throne in 1776, King Zhengzhou, who had the reputation of being a studious and learned prince, no longer had time to indulge in his pastime. He felt some comfort in seeing the books in Scala's accoutrement's painting in his office, even though they were only painted books. According to the 18th century scholar Yi Gyu-sang, 
Scala's accoutrements paintings were always painted in colors using newly introduced Western techniques of perspective and the shading, which made objects appear as if they were real. And the court painters were the first ones to paint them. King jong favorite <coughs> Court painter Kim Hong-do excelled in this theme. Therefore, this theme appears to have been closely associated with the court painters and was painted always in mineral colors using techniques of Western linear perspective and chiaroscuro. So how did Koreans learn about Western linear perspective? and the chiaroscuro. Korea's contact with the West took place in most unusual way. It was not a direct contact, but rather Korea met the West in Beijing. Of many Western missionaries, two Jesuit missionaries figured particularly large at the beginning stages of Korea's contact with the West. saved. <laughs> First was the Italian Jesuit missionary Matteo Ricci. He not only learned to speak Chinese, but also mastered Chinese reading and writing. He became widely known for his knowledge in mathematics and uh, astronomy and was invited into the Forbidden City in 1601 by the Wanli Emperor of the Ming Dynasty because Matteo Ricci's scientific knowledge and especially I think his ability to calculate solar uh, eclipses were highly valued. He died in Beijing in 1610. This is his grave in Jalan Cemetery with other missionaries and foreigners now located inside a Beijing administrative college campus. Matteo Rich produced two maps for the Wanli Emperor in 1602. One is the map of Asia and uh, um, the other, the map of the world. These two maps, and also his translation in Chinese of Euclid's elements of geometry became very important to uh, educated class of Koreans. Joseon Amboy, this is the uh, map of the world. As I was saying, Joseon Amboy, Yi Su-gwang, who went to Ming China as an Amboy several times beginning in 1590, received instructions on Western sciences and Christianity directly from Matteo Ricci. Each time he returned home with uh, many things from the West. During the 17th and 18th century, Korea's interest in the West escalated. Among Koreans who established close relationship with Jesuit, Jesuit missionaries in China was Joseon Dynasty's crown prince, Sohyun, uh, King Injo's eldest son. He and his brother were taken to Manchuria as hostages of the Manchu court after Korea was defeated in 1636 war. They spent eight years in Changde, Oroha, beyond the uh, Great Wall, where Manchu court had their palace, and the Qing emperors regularly spent their summers throughout the Qing dynasty. When Manchus defeated Ming and founded the Qing dynasty in 1644, Joseon princes were moved to Beijing. <laughs> While in Beijing, Prince Soyeon, Crown Prince Soyeon was befriended by German Jesuit missionary uh, Johann Adam Schall von Bell, known in Korea as Adam Schell. 
He was known for taking part in compiling the modified Chinese calendar called Chungjeon calendar, named after the last Ming Dynasty emperor. After Qing Dynasty was defeated, I mean, after Qing Dynasty was founded, I'm sorry, uh, Shunzhou Emperor of Qing made him a scholar official and gave him the position of director of imperial observatory and the tribunal of uh, mathematics. When Crown Prince Soyeon was allowed to return to Korea, Adam Shell apparently gave him many gifts, including religious publications, Western globe and instruments, and various books on astronomy. The solid contributions in regard to learning about West were made by young sons and nephews of chosen envoys who accompanied uh, their fathers and uncles who were sent to China in the official capacity with the official titles and responsibilities. The, the young relatives with no official duties to perform became keen observers and chroniclers of China during their travels from Seoul to Beijing and Chengde, and also especially throughout their stay uh, in Beijing. There are over 200 memoirs or journals by these young relatives of chosen envoys. Although each of them had different interests, they were generally keen on learning about Western sciences, astronomy, almanac, and so on. I'll mention two scholars whom I find most interesting. The uh, first is talented young mathematician uh, Hong Dao Yong. He traveled to China with his uncle between 1765 and 1766 and kept a captivating journal titled a Record of the 1765 and 1766 Travel to Beijing. He wrote that there were four Western buildings in Beijing called Chenjudang Catholic Church located in East, West, North. This shows a newly renovated facade. And the South. He wrote that Western missionaries had their residences inside these church compounds. The first place he went to visit in Beijing uh, was this South Catholic Church. He learned from earlier travelers that uh, of the four churches, this church was most interesting architecturally and had the most interesting objects to see. South Catholic Church built in 1605 during the reign of Wanli Emperor of Ming was associated uh, with both Matteo Ricci and Adam Shell. When Hong De Yong saw portraits of priests on the walls of the church, he immediately uh, recognized Matteo Ricci and Adam Shell, indicating that by Hong De Yong's time, sufficient information on Western missionaries in uh, China had been available among Korean scholars. As for Hong De Yong's reaction to paintings in the South uh, Catholic Church, I'm going to read you passages. Uh, translated by Professor Gary Ledyard and uh, uh, Kay uh, Black uses uh, in her in her essay in the Hopes and uh, Aspirations exhibition catalog. Uh, quote: As you go in the gate, there is a brick wall on the east, about 20 feet high. A hole had been knocked through the wall, making a gate. Through half-opened gate could be seen some multi-storied buildings on the uh, other side, uh, their balcony railings piled up on top of each other. I thought this was quite an unusual sight, and called Sepal, 
to ask him about it. Sefal left. He said, it's a painting. I went forward a few steps to inspect it closely, and, and indeed it was a painting, end quote. Here is another passage about what he saw inside the reception hall. Quote, here too there were paintings on both walls. It was startling to look from one side to the other. You did not sense that it was not real. I have heard that the marvel of Western painting is not just in its superhuman skill and ingenuity, but in its method of calculating the method of reduction, which, solely, uh, he, which comes solely from mathematics." End quote. Hong Dae-yong met two missionaries at the South Catholic Church. He identifies them uh, using uh, their Chinese names. <coughs> Yu Songnyeon and uh, uh, Bo Uguan. To satisfy his interest in uh, Western sciences, he visited many times missionary Yu, who was in charge of Imperial Observatory. Hong was able to see great many things from the West with help of missionary Yu. He was particularly impressed with Western binoculars, telescopes, machineries, tools, alarm clocks, and most of all, the church's pipe organ. See, since he apparently was a decent Kayagan player, he was delighted to be allowed to try the pipe organ. Regarding German Jesuit missionary Yu, whom he, he visited many times, Hong dae Young says, missionary Yu was 62 years old, and although his hair and beard were already turning white, he had a young man's face with penetrating eyes, and they resembled the figure in one of the paintings on the church wall. On the northern wall, he saw a figure wearing a crown of thorns, looking like a living person with deep concerns and worries. He initially thought this was a sculpture, but to his, to his surprise, it turned out to be a painting. He wrote that he was quite shocked by this realistically painted image, describing it as Hayo, meaning a weird or strange painting. Although he was very enthusiastic about realistic paintings of Western cities and buildings, his reaction to realistic paintings of people was different. He felt quite uncomfortable with Western pictorial realism when it was applied to people. On the, of, of all the memoirs, uh, Park Ji Won's memoir titled Yorha Ilgi, Diary of Cheongda or Raha, is actually most interesting. I'm a fan of his short stories. Park Ji Won went to uh, China in 1780 with his older relative, who was one of the officials representing the Joseon court on the occasion of Qianlong Emperor's 70th birthday. One of the places Park Ji Won visited, of course, was the uh, South Catholic Church that he heard so much about, especially from his friend Hong Dae Young. What he wanted to see most was pipe organ, but unfortunately pipe organ was no longer there. But he was struck by paintings on the walls and the ceilings of cathedral. What astonished him most was ceiling painted with cherubs. He described them as little babies with wings playing amid five colored clouds. They were hanging in space and their arms and legs were plump and looked as if they would feel warm and soft to the touch. So you can kind of visualize a Baroque ceiling uh, paintings in Italy and elsewhere in Europe. Some visitors who were with him were very surprised when they saw these babies. 
with astonished expression. They rushed out and spread their arms ready to catch the babies if they fell. <laughs> But like his friend Hong Dae-young, Park Ji-won also felt very uncomfortable and deceived on encountering Western pictorial realism applied to people. Kay Black discovered this painting attributed to Giuseppe Castiglioni, belonging to Mr. and Mrs. James Morrissey of Palm Beach, Florida. She illustrated it in her essay in the Hopes and Aspirations catalog. As you already know, Giuseppe Castiglioni was known in China by his Chinese name, Lang Xioning. He was an Italian Jesuit missionary lay brother who served as a painter at the Forbidden City. Many of you are familiar with his portraits of Qianlong Emperor, his emperors and consorts, and also his paintings of imperial horses. But you might not have known that uh, he painted murals in the South Catholic Church in Beijing. They are described as a magnificent cabinet with curios. Of course, South Catholic Church was on the top of the list of the places to visit in Beijing for Koreans on tribute missions that included court painters. Lang Xioning's painting we see here could be readily acceptable even by young Confucian scholars like Hong Dae Young and uh, Park Ji Won since it includes books and is painted following the principal principles of mathematics, they did not have to feel somehow deceived or hoodwinked. Although it differs in the way shelves are constructed and less importance are placed on books, but idea is there. We know that ideas are most important its most important component in creative works. And scholars who could burn paintings had to have connection to work such as this by Lang Xioning. Also, Lang Xioning might have been thinking about a studio law or small library such as this in Renaissance Italy when he came up with the idea of Chinese bookcases. This is an example of studio law from the Renaissance Gallery at the Met in New York. Shall we take a break here?